Okay, let's get going here. Um, I wanted to share this video that I've seen a couple of times and I thought it'd be important for us to be able to listen to it again. Or I don't know if you guys have listened to it, but I have. And it really resonated with me because it it is telling me the things that I should be doing. So um, let me get it turned on here. Okay. Hopefully this uh, audio comes through. Can you guys hear it okay? Yes. Right now, I can change your choices for good. All those poor choices you keep making that continue to derail your diet, derail your relationships, your career, and your life, I could change them in an instant. If I had the power to collapse the space-time continuum, if I could show you the choice that you're making today, that small, seemingly insignificant choice, if I could collapse the space-time continuum and show you the accumulated compound effect of this choice today, compounded over 20 years, I promise you'd make a different choice. You see, if you took a bite out of a Big Mac and immediately dropped to the ground, clutching your chest from a heart attack, you wouldn't go back for that second bite. I promise you, if your next puff of a cigarette instantly mutated your face into that of a weathered 95 year old i bet you'd crush that cigarette part if you fail to make that 10th sales call today as you promised and were fired on the spot and immediately bankrupted suddenly picking up the phone would be no problemo at all and if that first fork full of cake instantly put 50 pounds on your frame saying no thank you to dessert would be well a true piece of cake but here's the problem. It's easy to get faked out. You don't see how the consequences of that small, seemingly insignificant, poor choice in the moment has. In the moment, it doesn't look like it matters at all. You don't have that heart attack. Your face doesn't shrivel up. You're not shoved into the unemployment line. And your thighs don't turn thunderous. Oh, but you have done it. You have activated the compound effect. And that choice... That choice becomes behavior, and behavior that repeats becomes a habit. It accumulates, and then it compounds into calamity, into a heart attack, into divorce, into estrangement from the people that you love, into career failure and financial ruin. The good news is the compound effect works in the other direction as well. You don't need to radically make over your life. You don't need to make quantum leaps of change. You don't need to completely overhaul your personality your character, and your life. Super small, seemingly inconsequential adjustments can and will transform everything. Tell us, what poor behavior do you need to stop? And what good behavior do you need to begin starting today? Write it down in your Darren Daily Journal and then tell us about it in the comments below. Hey, guys, hello. hello, Missy here from the A Team. Producer Mariana asked me to hop on real quick and make sure that you heard Darren's exciting announcement yesterday. Okay, sorry, I couldn't find the place again. Okay, so you guys listen to Darren and I wanna know what thoughts are initially entering your mind. Any just basic thoughts? Nothing? No thoughts? Okay. Rochelle said, change your thinking. Change your thinking. What, what does that mean? Change your thinking, thinking. Say it again. If you have thinking, thinking, change it. Okay. So let's, like let's, your let's, mindset. Let's, Let's dive a little deeper today, if, 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 I, if we can. Um, let's, let's break it down to different segments or different aspects of our lives, okay? Let's initially talk about physical. So what are physical things that we experience that we don't see the choices that we make immediately, but we know, because you know, we're not stupid, that long-term, it's gonna have a negative impact. 
Can you think of something that you do or you eat or something that you do physically um, or you don't do that will have a long-term impact on you? That it doesn't so have- Tessa, Tessa's not on here, but we had this conversation last night because Bry Guy's on a health kick and he was telling her how horrible sugar is. Oh. And so sugar is my vice. Like I don't drink, I don't smoke, you know, sugar is my thing. Bed snacks are my favorite. And until I turned 40, maybe even 42, I could eat whatever I wanted. And I was the same size or smaller than I was in high school. And then now it's caught up to me and I know how bad it is. And I told her that I said, I know, I know I'm addicted to it. I know how bad it is, but I haven't hit rock bottom yet. <laughs> but I, and then I was telling her about the bowl of ice cream that I was going to have that night. Like it is that. <laughs> Like, but I've limited it mostly to, I only have it at night, right before bed, which is even worse because then I'm eating it before bed and then sleeping on it. So I know physically I feel sluggish in the morning, all of these things, and it's because of bed snacks. So. Yeah. Okay. Very good. And I appreciate you being vulnerable and sharing that. Um, there's a lot of us that experience this, right? One way or the other. And it's not just the things that we're shoving down our mouths, but also things that we are not doing, like getting enough sleep. Um, not exercising. You guys, exercising sucks. Nobody likes it. Nobody likes it. But what mm -hmm. they like is how they feel once they do it. Back to it. Right? And so you have to decide if you want or are going to be okay with what the long-term consequences of the actions that you take today. Right? Because if you choose to live and, and you know, make bad choices, not really thinking about the consequences because they're, they're down the road, it's gonna catch up to you real quick. That's physical. Let's get to just briefly talk about spiritual. Um, you know, either either you, you know, believe in God or you, you believe in a higher being of some sort, whatever that is, um, meditation and prayer, I think can go a long way for our spiritual health. Um, you know, I, I firmly believe that our bodies are made up of our spirits and our physical body. And a lot of times we don't nourish our spiritual bodies um, enough. And that that's a, you know, it, it, it could take its toll after a long time. Um, third one I wanted to bring up was personal relationships. Think about the relationships that you have with your spouse, significant other, children, parents. Um, wh wh whoever they are, how is your, you know, if you were to take a temperature of your relationship, are you doing things that are making your relationship grow? Or are you doing things inconsequential for just that one second? But again, the compound effect will have a huge impact on your relationships. You see lots of people that are married. And as soon as their kids are out of the house, what do they do? They divorce, they, they bail out, right? Why? Because they spent 20 years of their lives focusing all of their energy and attention on raising kids. And when those kids are gone, they have no more co-purpose. They have no more, um, you know, like reason to be together, right? But, and you don't think about that when you're raising kids because you're in the thick of it. But if you take the time and energy you know, make sure that you guys are intimate with one another, you know, both emotionally and physically, making sure that you are, you know, going on dates and, you know, being present and growing together. Um, I remember I had a friend of mine when we've, I've been married for like three, four years. You guys, I'm going to invite you to turn your cameras on. Can, if you can please turn your cameras on if you're here. Um, if, if you are, thank you. Um, if you are married and you're not constantly doing things. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. I, I had a little brain fart. So I was, I've been married for five years. I had a buddy of mine that just got a divorce. And it was a pretty big thing back then just because it, it was like fresh for us newlyweds. Um, and I called my buddy and I said, hey, listen, like, you know, please, what advice can you give? Because um, I don't want to get divorced. And he said, well, what I realized, and they'd only been married for a couple of years before they, they separated. And he goes, what I realize is that you're constantly growing as a human being, constantly growing. And either you're growing together or you're growing apart. There's no stagnation. There's no, you know, we're, we're just fine. We're coasting. 
there's no coasting because if you coast, you're always going up a hill. So if you start coasting, you're going to naturally go back down. You might not see it right away, but it'll have a massive impact in five, 10, 15 years from now. Okay. So that's relationships. And so I invite you guys to take the, the, the chance weekly, daily, however long you want or however, how often you want to take inventory of these things, your spiritualness, your physical body, and your, your personal relationships. The next one, and this is the one I want to spend bulk, the bulk of our time, we're going to be discussing business. Okay. Now, a lot of us got into the business because we liked what? What do we enjoy? Money. Money. We like money. Yes. If you're freedom. a real, you should like money. What else do we enjoy? The freedom. Freedom. Yes, Nino. Tell us a little bit more about that. What does it mean that, you know, by being in this industry, you have freedom? Freedom to wake up anytime you want. Freedom to take a lunch whenever you want. Freedom to go see your family anytime you want. Freedom to go on vacation anytime you want. Yeah. So much and, time in your hands. And what comes with that freedom? Well, you have to be responsible with your time because otherwise. Hard work. That's right. You take it for granted. That's right. Because in the, in the lack of structure, we think that we are happy as can be, right? If you were to ask any kid, hey, can you do some chores? What's their response to that? Oh my gosh, you're killing me. You're the worst parent ever, right? Mm -hmm. Why? Because they rather just sit in their filth, never take a shower, never wipe their butts, never clean their hands or cut their fingernails or any of the other disgusting things that little kids do. Um, and they'd be completely content because they would think that they would be just left alone. Even teenagers, same thing. They have this mindset that, you know, you're ruining my life because you're having, you know, you put all these restrictions and these, you know, um, things that I can't do. And at the end of the day, those restrictions, those, the guidance, if you will, can help them become a better version of themselves. And in business, it's the same thing. You might have the illusion of freedom. You might have the illusion of, you know, hey, I can do whatever I want, when I want, how I want, with who I want. But guess what? That's short-lived, right? That's short-lived. If you had a job where you were an employee of somebody and you were constantly, constantly late or not showing up to work at all, um, not doing your job, how long would you last in that job before you got fired? Not too long. Not too long, right? Maybe a month, maybe you can inch, you know, two months out. But then at the end of the day, that sense of security is going to go away because you, you are not doing your job. You're not fulfilling your end of the bargain. But as realtors, right? Like, yes, we sometimes hound you to say, hey, I need you to be at this meeting or that meeting. But at the end of the day, no one's holding your hand every single day of the week. So pardon my French, what the hell do you do every single day? Like what the living F are you spending your time and energy on? Because I promise you that you are not disciplined enough to be able to do the things that you need to do so that you can have an amazing future. And forget about yourself for a hot minute Think about your prosperity, your, your, your future generations, and how they're going to see you. There's a, an, an agent that I, was re, I was in, uh, had a meeting with recruiting uh, to join five as an independent agent. He's down in uh, Long Beach. And, and I asked him, I said, you know, he's, he's got over like 500,000 followers on Instagram. He, he, you know, he, he's like a public speaker has a whole bunch of investments, like he's really well put together. Um, and, I, and I asked him like, what's the point of you doing all these videos? You know, like what do you get from it? Is it just an accolade? And when he was, you know, he said to me that totally stood out, he goes, I do it for my kids. He's got a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old boy. And he goes, I, I wish that I had video of my mom and dad or my grandparents or my great-grandparents and so that I can, you know, hear their wisdom, and get to know them, you know, more intimately than, than, you know, just when they were 95 or eight, when they were eight, in their 80s. Like, I would love to have seen them in their prime because I make videos because it's, a, you know, allows me to basically vlog or, you know, share my story and who I am as a person 
to not only the people that I connect with, but more importantly, more than anybody to my kids. And so again, I went off on a little tangent, but going back to business, like if you were to take an inventory of your business and how much time or what are the habits that you have that are bad habits and what are the habits that are good habits and how much time do you spend doing those bad habits versus the good habits? Hey, so, Nazar, just a little side point too, when Nino said that you have the freedom and you have all of those things, when yeah. you're not disciplined, you actually lose that freedom. Because when you think about it, if I'm not working and I'm not making money and I'm not able to support myself, I lose the freedom to be able to do those things that I want to do. Am I able to just go on vacation? Am I able to, you know, go and buy what I want? No, because I don't have the money or I may be in debt and I'm working to pay off that first. So by not being disciplined, you're, you know, actually holding yourself back. And, and I think what that, what, what, and I appreciate that, what that comes to is immediately, right? Today, I just feel lazy. I'm going to take the day off. Is that going to impact your life, right? You do that consistently, then what happens? Then you pay the piper. Might not be this moment, but then, then you're like, oh crap, I've got no money in the bank account. I have no prospects, nothing in escrow, freaking out. But when you get to that level or that point, guess what? It's too late, isn't it? It's too late at that point in time to like say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna fix it because you can't fix it right away or immediately. So, so he's not on here. Ryan McGinnis is a good example of that. He does phenomenal, like most of the time, but he will, in past years, he's put the brakes on, like he's been close to his goal and he's put the brakes on and has stopped doing those things that he's so well, you know, does so well. Yeah. And he regrets it every single time he regrets it. So this year he's like, I'm not stopping. I'm not putting the brakes on because he has to start over every single time. He's like, great. Now I've gone through all my prospects and now I got to start over and it gets harder and harder each time. Yep. Chris, how does it feel January 15th when you're done with holidays and you haven't worked for 45 days or 60 days? Um, how does it feel at that point in time? Feel good? You're muted, bro. I can't hear you. It's, it's a mixture of feelings like <laughs> it, no no because like i because i also feel motivated you know like because okay. i don't have anything so like and i i don't mind going showing houses doing appointments but there is that scarcity it's like okay i won't even get paid for at least another 30 days so that's right yeah. so priming that pump on a regular basis making those small micro decisions every single day on all the aspects of our lives will have a bigger impact on our future than it is today, right? It's hard to see or think about what five years or even six months down the road will be. But if you're not prepared today and you're not you're not creating those good habits this today, um, then you're gonna lose out in the future, right? You're gonna be in a really bad spot in the future. The last one I had on here was emotional. Um, you know, again, are you emotionally sound? Are you emotionally well? Do you need counseling? Um, you know, do you need to meet with a psychologist or psychiatrist or, you know, like, is your headspace good? Are your, you know, going back to relationships, are you uh, a needy individual, right? Do you like depend on others for your enjoyment? If you're answering yes to any of those questions, then that means that you have an unhealthy relationship. And that is something that could be worked on and bettered. And same thing with our with our uh, clients, right? Like if we are if we have an unhealthy relationship with them, it's not a good experience for anybody, right? If you're constantly at the at their beck and mercy and beck and call, and you don't set boundaries and limits, like you are basically giving them permission to treat you like garbage. So let's go back to what Darren was saying. The very first thing is choice, right? We make choices every single day. In fact, I think. I read somewhere or I'd seen a statistic that said like we make 56,000 choices every single day. That's a lot of choices, right? And those choices that we make have or become what? What do they become? Habits. That's right. They become habits. And so those, you know, it becomes habitual, right? We're, 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 we're even if it's, even if the frequency doesn't seem like it's habitual, if it's something that we're doing once a month, 
or once every other month or once every other week or once every, whatever that frequency is, it still becomes a habit. So instead of looking at it in a negative way, focus on the positive habits that you can create that again, like, you know, I hate the fact that I'm as heavy as I am right now. Um, and it's hard to like lose weight, but I know that if I have a good day where I make good choices, um, and then the next day I make poor choices and the day after that I make good choices, at the end of the day, I'm still making bad choices. It's just not as frequent. And so I get to control, or you know, if I have control of that frequency and not doing it, that's what's going to give me long-term pleasure and long-term health that I currently don't have. My father-in-law, who's diabetic, has one leg amputated, several fingers amputated because of his diabetes, is on dialysis three, four times a week, miserable life. And he has convinced that his dialysis or his diabetes is a direct response to his hereditary biological DNA. He does not believe for whatever reason that his poor healthy or poor food choices and intake choices or amount of food he consumes had anything to do with his diabetes. Now, would you guys agree that he's right? That it, it, it doesn't matter what type of diet you eat if you're, if you're prone to be diabetic, you're naturally going to be diabetic when you get older. We're talking type 2 diabetes, right? Not type 1. What do you guys think? Absolutely not, right? It has absolutely a direct impact on it. He might not have seen or acknowledged that when he was in his 30s and 40s and 20s and had created some really deep-rooted habits, what happens is that, that those habits become compounded, right? Just like compounding interest. Like it, it might seem like it's, you know, a, a linear growth, but it adds up very quickly, especially near the end. Same thing with business. If we are constantly making poor choices when it comes to business, if we're being lazy or not putting in the energy and time that we need to doing the job and working effectively, smart, not hard, um, then I promise you that you can have so much more opportunity, right? You can have so much more freedom to be able to do the things that you want to do and, and make an impact in, in your life. Uh, when I was talking to this gentleman, again, you know, with 500,000 followers, he has a lot of clout. He has a lot of influence. And, and I was like, you know, what would you do? You know, we just started talking about the, the profit sharing um, at five. And he's like, you know, Nazar, like, honestly, I have enough investment properties that I don't have to work a day in my life. And this guy is probably like 41. Uh, which is like, congratulations, that's an awesome place to be. And he goes, and so what I, what I would do with that money is I would just give it to charity. You know, so for him, the, 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 you know, making hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars didn't have like the, the monetary aspect of it because his needs were met. He was more concerned about what type of a contribution he can make in this world, right? Um, what type of legacy he can leave behind. So I challenge every single one of you that's listening to me right now, like focus my or focus your attention and just for a minute, think about these different aspects of your life, your spiritual, your physical, your emotional, your business, um, your, your relational. What is it that you can do to make micro changes, nothing massive or drastic, but micro changes that will allow you to have a better future. It'd be, you know, whether it be a week from now, a year from now, or 20, 30 years from now. So what do you guys think? Well, what are, I, I'd like you to, to tell me what are some commitments that, that you are, are, are willing to make right now? What are some micro changes? I don't need massive, right? I don't need earth shattering changes in your life. Just make small little changes, but be habitual about them so that they have a compound effect and have a massive impact on your life. So what are those things? I've been um, waking up in the morning and instead of going on my phone, I've been reading uh, a book every morning. Wow. Um, and what type of book are you reading? How long are you reading? And what type of impact has it made on your life already? Depends. I've already read one book. Now I'm reading the book, um, the one that the office provided. <laughs> okay. Think and Grow Rich? Yes. 
that, so, that, it, there's like the Bible and thinking you're rich. Like they're like right there for me. Um, <laughs> that's how important it is. I um I bought more books. Um, okay. And I've just got them in Amazon. Um, and so it really depends. Like the Thinking for Rich, there was one chapter in there. I just read chapter, I think it was eight. And it was like the organized one. And it was just so long and drawn out. Like I had to like break that one up. But I try to at least do a chapter every morning, depending on what the book size is. Is this something you're listening to? Or is this something you're actually physically reading? I'm a physical person. Yeah. Very good. Um, that's fantastic. And, and and how long have you been doing this right now, where you've stopped looking at your phone and started listening to book or reading books? It's been about like um, two months now. Two months. Okay. I radically, it depends on the day. Like some days I go to the gym, so it's different. Sure. But I'll try to, yeah. But I, 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 how many times a week at least in those two months? Three. Okay, so at least three times a week for the last sixty days, you've been reading books instead of being on your phone or doing anything else. And what, have you seen any type of an impact already in your life? Just my mind, like frame set because of the books I'm reading. Yeah. It just inspires me in the morning and gives me more ideas of how to like plan out my day and go about it. Absolutely. I appreciate you sharing. Anybody else have anything? I do, if I don't sound too horrible. Um, before getting sick, I was getting up early in the morning um, to go to work out um, like you at a certain point in time. Um, I was able to do everything and anything, eat everything. But now I find it that it's building up, so to say, in that muffin top. So um, I get up early, 536 o'clock. I don't like it, um, but I'm very proud of myself of being able to get up and go at least starting off two, then three times a day and it's helped me mentally because then I just feel cleansed and I feel like I'm able to go and accomplish a lot uh, during the day. So for me, that's helped me because like you said, spiritually, I feel that if I'm good set, then everything else in my life is gonna be harmonious. Yeah. And if I have that balance, then I know everything is good. Awesome, thanks for sharing, Sandy. Anybody mm -hmm. else, anybody from the office? Yeah, I started working out in the morning as well. I've been doing it about a month. And the difference that I've noticed is I have more energy um, during the day as well as during the week. I get more accomplished and my mind's um, clear. Yeah. And you know what's interesting is that, you know, speaking of exercise specifically, that kind of goes into other aspects of your life, doesn't it? Like if you exercise and feel good, then when you see that donut, you're like, Hmm, I'm going to go ahead and pass, right? I'm going to go ahead and pass on the donut today because I just worked out and my watch after two hours of doing whatever says that I've only burned 500 calories and this donut is a thousand calories. Um, that's going to, you know, like, no, I don't want to do that. But if you don't work out, then that eating that donut becomes a lot easier to do, doesn't it? Oh, Christine's like, there's two boxes of Krispy Kremes at the office. That's awesome. <laughs> uh anyway i saw right. that over there yeah <laughs> um anyway so you guys i just want to invite you to live life intentionally i want to invite you to live life intentionally and what that means is is that you take an inventory of your day you take an inventory of your week and your year and you see with the things and be honest with yourself and the things that you could improve on and you can see the things that you're doing fantastic, you need to double down on. And I know that it's hard, but nothing easy or nothing that's worthwhile is easy in this life. Everything ch you know, requires challenge and sacrifice. And sacrifice, we had a lesson about this in church a couple weeks ago, is the difference between the what you are willing to give up this moment for what you want more in the future. So I'm gonna sacrifice and not eat that donut because in the future, I'm going to have a better healthy life than I am today, because either I'm going to watch what I eat, or I'm going to be eating, you know, pills in the future, right, or, or injecting myself with needles and who knows what else. So, okay, 
Hey, We're, I have a question or I have a, a suggestion. You know how we always end up having an intentional theme for the year, like we'll cross that bridge, we'll burn that bridge. We need to have uh, live life intentionally be our theme this year because so mm -hmm. many of our trainings, so many of our themes have been like purposeful and intentional. That's so awesome. to, that's kind of written up on the board somewhere. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, most of us live our lives in default. We just, we kind of go with the coast or, you know, like just do however things go, whatever, whichever direction the wind blows. And we blame our circumstances for our thoughts and our feelings and how, where we are, right? You're like, well, I was, you know, my, my mom was diabetic and therefore that's why I like donuts and, and I'm going to be diabetic too, you know, or, well, I came from a poor family um, and therefore I'm poor. Like you have the power. Do not give control of your life to circumstances or anybody else. You have the power to be able to make that impact and that change. And I invite you guys to do that. I invite you guys to be methodical, to, to be intentional. And, and then again, like if you are phenomenal at one aspect of your life, but you suck at the others, then that's going to have an imbalance. And that imbalance is going to cause you to be able to not have it be something that you can do long term right? You've got people that are workaholics. All they focus on is money and work, money and work. And then what happens to their family? It crumbles, right? It goes to shiz. So if you, you can't, you can't be all in on one thing and then be crappy on others. Like I believe in moderation in all things. So be moderate in all those things, but be intentional with those things. That makes sense. Okay. So I want to hear what is it that you guys are committing to? I want to hear some commitments before we go. Hey. I commit to only three times a week bed snacks. Bed snacks <laughs> three times a week. That's fair. That's a good start. I'm committing to drinking more water because I'm always dehydrated. I don't drink enough fluids. And so I bought like a big <laughs> bottle that has the timelines on it. So I'm, I'm thirsty. Drinking every day. <clears throat> okay that, that's awesome um anybody else less alcohol intake for me <laughs> why is that I'm, why is that because i have too much okay um again short term drinking a lot of alcohol is not a big deal long term it has a massive impact right right that's why i want to do less of it <laughs> or, or you can just stop drinking all together right um, oh, i don't know baby steps baby steps that's true micro micro changes that's we'll that's get great. there okay very good all right guys well thank you so much for being here again we're going to make this consistent every single week um our coach doug is going to be doing these calls or three of these calls a, a month and depending on the month if there's five weeks in the month or five thursdays in the month then we'll do have two additional calls um, if it's only, you know, four weeks out of the month, then what more of those calls will be done. If any one of you guys want to lead this training session, um, please reach out to me. Send me a text message saying, Hey, Nazar, I'd love to be able to, you know, you know, talk about this aspect of, of business in general. And I'm more than happy to put you on the calendar. Um, any other questions, thoughts, concerns you guys have? Nothing over here. Very good. Um, I plan on being in town just so you guys know. Um, on the 26th uh, to the 28th. So in, in two weeks, I'll be there. Um, so hopefully we okay. can get together, have an in, in, you know, in-person meeting on Tuesday the 26th and then um, have some fun maybe that night. Okay, all right, you guys. Okay. Have a powerful Thursday um, and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Bye.